Welcome to Mainland, your local regional television station. I'm Graham O'Brien and some of the stories coming up in today's news. Vote on Best Fiction Book, Temporary Resident Award Goes To, and more. If you are a book buff, this is your last chance to get your vote in for the Nelson Public Libraries Award for New Zealand Fiction 2015, which closes on Monday the 12th. I went down to our popular library to talk with organiser Alison Barker about the competition. Alison, thanks for taking the time to talk to us this morning. I know you're busy down here at the library. Um, you've got a competition going on at the moment for books. Can you tell us a little bit about it, please? Yeah, sure. Um, we really wanted to celebrate New Zealand fiction, the range and depth of New Zealand fiction that's being published. And this year they're taking a year off the national award, so we decided to hold our own Nelson oh. Award for New Zealand fiction. So we shortlisted um, six books that we thought were really, really good examples of great New Zealand writing, um, and we've invited the public to vote on them for their um, the one that they really enjoyed reading. Um, so we've got um, online voting at our website and we've also got offline voting in all three of our libraries and voting is open until the 12th of October. Um, we contacted the publishers of all of the books and they're really enthusiastic as well. And so there's still time to get along and vote. That's fantastic. And, and if you're a book buff, you'll be, you'll be rushing down here to vote. And um, when will we find out the lucky winner? Well, we're going to have um, an evening at the 6.15 on Wednesday, the 21st of October. We've got a carnival day all of that day, which is right in the middle of readers and writers. So the whole thing is celebrating New Zealand writing. And it culminates at 6.15 when we announce the winner. Alison, thanks very much. Now we know why the, why the Nelson Library is so popular with all this going on. Yep. Yes it is, it's um, a really, really exciting library and there's lots happening all the time. And like I say, we just really wanted to promote the fabulous New Zealand um, fiction writing that's happening at the moment. Great, thanks very much. Okay, thank you. The power poles have now all been removed in the South High Street area of Motueka as part of their new underground wiring project for the area. Contractors have been laying cables underground for many months and over the past few weeks the overhead wires have been removed and now the power poles have also been removed. The final part of the project is to install the street lights. Local residents and visitors have noted a major positive change to the whole area making it visually more pleasing and safer. Is this man a new definition of temporary resident? This skateboarder was caught on a dash camera skating down the upper Trafalgar street outside the girls college. A few minutes later he cut in front of the same car and missed being run over by just millimetres. Not only was he putting his own life at risk, but his actions were unlawful and putting other road users at risk. If he'd have been caught by police doing this, he would have gone for a real skate. Local charities are vying for money to keep up their good work, and there seems to be an increasing amount of charities out there applying for the same elusive dollars. However, our camera was there to see that some retailers went to the party to help late last month with a $5 store set up for one day with donated goods from the warehouse. Mainland's TV's Ethan Williams spoke with Sally from Canteen Nelson. My name's Sally, I'm the local staff member for Canteen Nelson Marlborough and all the money raised today by ZM partnering with Canteen Nelson Marlborough will go directly to our young people living in this region who have an experience with cancer. So this is a new local initiative this year and hopefully a long-lived lovely partnership that will continue for this region to support our local youth. A few weeks ago we spoke to local playwright Daryl Weir about his new play, Something About Losing a Child, which opens at Fairfield House tonight. Chrissy Small caught up with local thespian and the play's director Hugh Neal about this play at the final dress rehearsal. I will get through this. I understand what's happened. I know why it happened. And I know it's my fault. But I will get through this. I must. That's it. I'm finished. I really thought he'd live. I, I knew he'd be scared. Badly. His perfect satin smooth skin. She won't want me now. This will bust us wide open. 
I wish I could know what to do to keep us all together. I mean, it's not Dylan's fault. He's little. He needs both of us. But if I hug him as fiercely as I need to, he wonders what the hell is going on. All those other mothers are alien to me now. Or at least, I'm alien to them. It's like I've got a disease. They fear my grief might spread and they might catch it. When we touch, there's no comfort in it. We're supposed to support each other, but we just can't. So why are we trying? Hugh Neal, something about losing a child. It's obviously a, a topic um, that's going to cause some emotional response. How has it been directing this play? It's surprising it's been incredibly easy for me. Um, first of all, I was absolutely uh, gobsmacked when Daryl asked me to direct for him because um, he felt uh, it would be just a little bit too emotional for him to, uh, having written it and being so personal to him to direct it as well, so he asked me. And he was quite um, staunch about who he wanted to play the two leads, the, the husband and wife. Um, that's Scott and Brani, who I didn't know at all, never met them. Right. So I was a little bit apprehensive, because I like to, so directors are a, bit, a little bit of control freaks, <laughs> and like to have some control as to who's in the cast. But from the first rehearsal, I was absolutely, I knew that Daryl was spot on. Couldn't have, I can't, couldn't have thought of any two better actors in Nelson to play those two parts. Right. And uh, now tell me, how, how, can, how can people expect to feel when they're watching this play? Well, I think people uh, will feel lots of different emotions. Uh, um, I still get emotional in bits, and I know some of the actors will too. But uh, it's, I, didn't, I didn't go away from the, at the end of the play feeling depressed or sad. It's obviously, it was a sad situation, a, a sad event happened. But uh, through the uh, process of the play, as it develops, as the story develops, I think uh, there's, there's potential hope at the end. So I, I don't, certainly don't feel... Some people, I think those that think they'll get depressed will probably stay away. Yeah. Okay, so Hugh, how many in the cast? That's a good question. I believe there's about 10 in the cast. Yeah. Right. Okay. And of course, it's it's a it's a topic that's going to um, cause some people some grief. Do you think people should bring tissues? Oh, uh, bringing tissues is always a good thing. Always, I always bring tissues because I never know what to expect in theatre. <laughs> that's what theatre's about. Right. Um, but yeah, but don't don't uh, you don't feel that you're just going to be bawling your eyes out through the whole play because I don't believe you will. No. Um, tell me, ticket sales, can people buy at the door? I believe so. That's something that's... I, I'm just the director, not involved in the actual producing side of things. But I'm sure people can. Um, if they turn up, I'm sure people, they won't be turned away. Right. How many nights will it be playing? Opens on Thursday night and it runs through to Saturday night, starting at 7.30. Right, OK. So people should get here early. They should do, yes. Get here at 7, 7 to 7.15. Get a good seat because they're, they're not numbered. It's first come, first serve. But I think they'll be have it, there'll be a night that they will enjoy, despite despite the sad storyline. After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. Hi everyone, I'm Malcolm Harris from The Facilitators. We now look after sales for mainland TV, radio, Sky and online. New Zealand On Air's latest Colmar Brunton survey confirms mainland's large multimedia audience. If you're in business or want to put a message out to everyone in the Nelson, Tasman region, plus nationwide on Sky or worldwide online, please give me a call or see our website at www.mainlandtv.nz. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables and much, much more. 
Jacob. 120, Hardy Street, Nelson. Hey, I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacement, scratch removal. If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. Eighty-eight point one, the shed. Isla is in bloom this Sunday the 11th from 11am to 3pm for those that love spring. However, there is something for everyone with classic bikes on show, face painting and storytelling. Sit and Be Fit is on at the Victory Community Centre Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10am at the Victory Community Church, 238 Upper Vanguard Street. School terms only. Fun while you get fitter, work at your level. For more information, please contact Shirley on 547 1433 or 021 121 8023. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30 p.m. at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Are you tired of endless reality shows? Would you prefer to watch captivating documentaries? They have swallowed cars. Exciting movies. Go ahead, load up and shoot. Music for the soul. And if you think I'd eat your fish and chips, I did that you're mistaken. Programming from around the world. Places to visit. Local news and views. I'm Graham O'Brien and today's bulletin. Do you want to change the flag? No, nah, I, don't, I don't want to change the flag. Stay tuned to Mainland TV, your local station. Welcome to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter. Give us a call on 546-4084 and we'll be happy to spoil you. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom specialist, have a great range of bathroom ideas at their showroom at 23 McGlashan Ave in Richmond. Call in and check out some of the latest bathroom designs and fittings. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom plumbing and drainage supply specialist, 23 McGlashan Ave, Richmond. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as 
220. And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as 425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a seven drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a three drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $9.79. So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. The Lowell Observatory, Flagstaff, Arizona. In 1930, the outermost planet Pluto is discovered through this telescope. Astronomer Clyde Tomba makes the find. He's 24 at the time. Tomba does it by systematically photographing the sky on large glass plates. He snaps each piece of sky twice, several nights apart. Then, with this blinker, he compares the two images. If they're identical and nothing jumps, he's not interested. For only objects within the solar system move against the background stars. After six months of blinking, the dot that jumps is Pluto. Pluto and its moon Charon have a combined mass of less than one-fifth of our moon. Little frontier worlds of methane and water frozen in the outer gloom. On average, compared to Earth, they're 40 times farther from the sun. Far beyond is the Oort cloud, a swarm of freezing debris that shrouds the solar system like a sphere. Closer in is more icy trash, the Kuiper belt. Pluto, with its wide eccentric orbit, may well be a member of this belt and not a true planet. Like the comets that visit us from Kuiper and Oort, Pluto is a mixture of ices. This is Comet Hayakataki in 1996. Its nucleus is a snowball three kilometers wide, but the tail stretches for millions of kilometers. As a comet nears the sun, it grows two tails. The yellow one is fine dust, the blue, gas. The gas tail detaches occasionally in the gusting solar wind. It's that wind, plus the pressure of solar radiation, that blows the tails away from the sun. With the solar disk masked, time lapse of a comet rounding the sun. Here, comets plunging into the sun. Comets are the vagabonds of the solar system. Some travel on random elliptical orbits, hurtling among the planets. Kamikaze comets die in the sun. Others just graze it. Jupiter plays havoc with comets. This one is captured from its orbit around the sun by the pull of the giant planet. The comet, a fragile mix of ice and grit, is drawn within 50,000 kilometers. It pays the price. Jupiter tears it into more than 20 fragments, and it's just the beginning. The comet, named Shoemaker-Levy 9, is to stage the celestial show of the century. It's to plunge into Jupiter carpet bombing the soupy atmosphere. The date, July 1994.
The fragments create shock waves as big as Earth. The moment of an impact. Lower left, a plume shoots over a thousand kilometers high. The most famous comet is Halley. It visits our skies once every 76 years. When he sees it in 1301, the Italian painter Giotto makes Halley his star of Bethlehem. The bio tapestry depicts the Norman conquest of England in 1066. The comet is overhead. On Halley's last visit, the first of the space age, we visit it. A craft aptly named Giotto is launched by the Europeans. It's the most ambitious of an international armada. For Giotto is to fly right through the inner coma, the cloud that surrounds the nucleus. It's 1986 and there is the nucleus, shaped like a peanut, 16 kilometers by nine. Vaporized by the heat of the sun, gas and dust vent from cracks in the surface. Glare obscures the view, but Halley's crust is carbon black. The coma, fed by the jets, is well over a million kilometers across, bigger even than the sun. These are the icy planetesimals of the Kuiper belt, a disk of debris just beyond the planets. It's from here that Halley originates, dislodged perhaps by a twitch in the gravitational interplay between the Sun and its neighboring stars. Halley is lucky. As solar gravity draws it inward, the comet swings round the Sun rather than into the Sun. But Halley is now captive, trapped in an orbit that takes it out beyond Neptune, then back to the Sun, again and again. Halley has an orbit of 76 years. Longer period comets arrive from farther out, comets like Hale-Bopp, the most spectacular of the late 20th century. Nineteen ninety-seven is the year of Hale-Bopp. Here in close-up, the spinning nucleus, 40 kilometers wide, swirling gas and dust. They stream from the hemisphere heated by the sun, switching on and off as the nucleus rotates. At its closest to the sun, Hale-Bopp sheds a thousand tons of dust every second. But in the chill of the outer solar system, comets revert to type. They become tailless and inert. Historically, comets always have tails, and they're linked to death and destruction. But fear of comets isn't all nonsense. To this day, they are cause for concern. Had Hale-Bopp struck Earth, we'd all be dead. But that's another story. The spacecraft Stardust on a close encounter with Comet Build 2. Like sticky flypaper, this instrument is to collect samples. A Stardust travels through the coma of the comet. But unlike Giotto, which relayed only data from Halley, Stardust is to send its samples home. Insulated in a capsule, resistant to a fiery re-entry through Earth's atmosphere, a precious package from beyond the planets. Retrieved from a soft landing in the polar wastes, these samples of Vild 2 will be unique. The first chance for scientists to examine particles unchanged 
since the formation of the solar system. The Oort cloud stretches a third of the way to the nearest star. Its messengers are comets. Oh, this is a beautiful four bedroom, three bathroom home. It's large internal access double garage. It fits two cars nicely with a little workshop bench at the end of it. In this room we have two large lazy boys, a three seater and a two seater leather lounge suite, 50 inch Samsung TV and a heat pump. Features are a cathedral ceiling and of course that beautiful view. For relatively little cost, you too can sell your house. Do it yourself. You're the best person to promote and sell your own house. Your personal endorsement is the best selling proposition. Put yourself on screen and sell it. You know the attractions of your house. You know it better than anybody else. So, get up there and tell us all about it. Sell it. Oh, upstairs we have three bedrooms. Uh, one of these has a full ensuite. That's the master bedroom with large bifold doors. Now, at these bifold doors, you get to a wraparound uh, deck area that faces northwest, and this is lovely in the morning for sitting and having your coffee. Hawk Films is now producing for you an advertising package and a broadcasting service at a price far lower than you would expect. We will produce your advertising video and feature it across TV, radio and electronic media. Your message will be up to three minutes long and it will be broadcast five times a day on radio and TV. Five times a day. And it will be listed online all day, every day for exposure to your potential buyers. You can also use the ad and the photos to promote your house on radio, TV, Trade Me and other real estate sites. We can also offer drone aerial shots for a totally different viewpoint from the one you would normally see. Selling your house is up to you and your solicitor. We're here to merely add value to your advertising strategy. Give me a call and let's get your property on the market. Or better still, email or text me and I'll call you back. Nelson Tire Center. Great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer. All types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or pushchairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery. We have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. 
Welcome me hearties to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, famous for hearty meals, craft owls and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too, or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time, relax and enjoy our award winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim. Phone 5464 084.